What's up everybody and welcome to part three of my coding a random forest from scratch series. In the previous video, we have implemented the bootstrapping and the random subspace method. And in this video now, we're going to create the function that creates those different trees. And then also the function that creates uh, the predictions for our random forest algorithm. So let's get back to the notebook. And let's first create a function that creates those different trees. And this is actually then our random forest algorithm. And here we put in our training data frame. And then another parameter is going to define the number of trees that we want to build or input into the forest. Then uh, in bootstrap, this is going to determine how many examples we want to have in our bootstrap data set. Then and features, which is uh, the number of features that we want to have in our random uh, random subspace method, and then uh, also the decision tree max def, so that we can determine how many uh, layers there should be in the decision tree, and this should already be it. And then uh, we're going to simply return our forest. So uh, and this forest then simply is a list that contains all of our trees. So to create those trees, we simply uh, we a loop over all the, uh, the number of trees that we want to have. So we're going to say for i in range n trees. And then first we're going to create our bootstrapped data set. Uh, df bootstrapped. So then equals bootstrapping of our training data frame. And then we pass in the M bootstrap, the number of examples that we want to have. And then we're going to say, or we build a tree. So we're going to say tree equals decision tree algorithm, which is a helper function that we put here at the beginning. And here we're going to put in the bootstrap data frame. Then we're going to set the max def to decision tree max def. So we're going to use this parameter here. And then for the random subspace, we pass in the number of features that we want to have. And then when we've created that tree, we simply append it to our forest. And that's already our function. So now let's see if that works. So we're going to say forest equals random forest algorithm. And we pass in our training data frame, the number of trees. We're going to set to four and bootstrap. Let's see how many examples we have in our training data frame. So almost 1,300. So let's just set it to 800. Then n features for the random subspace is uh, four, and then the decision tree max def we're also going to set to four. So let's now run this, and we don't get an error. So now let's see if we ha uh, actually have uh, four trees in our forest, and we do. So now let's have a look at the first forest. And here, let's actually pretty print that. So that's our first tree. Let's now also print out the second to see if it's different. And it is. So let's then also print out those other two trees. So tree two, that's also different. And the last tree, so fades. Okay, that's also different. So the function 
seems to be working properly. We create our different trees. And now we can create a function that uh, determines the predictions for our random forest. And the way that this function is going to work is that we put uh, the predictions of all of our trees uh, in the forest into a data frame. So the rows of the data frame are gonna be uh, the examples and the columns are gonna be then tree one, two, three, and so on. And then uh, to determine the predictions for the random forest, we're simply gonna uh, determine the mode over all the columns, uh, over all the rows. So we determine which value for a specific example appears most often or which prediction appears most often. So that's how that function is going to work. And we're gonna call it random forest predictions. And here we pass in our test data frame and our forest. And then the function should simply return uh, the predictions at uh, the random forest predictions. Random forest predictions. So the way that this function is gonna work is that we first uh, create a variable called df predictions. So this is gonna be then the data frame that contains all the predictions of the trees. And this first is simply a dictionary, which we then gonna transform into a data frame later on. And then we simply loop over all uh, over our forest, over all the trees in our forest. So we're gonna say for i, in range length of our forest. And here then we're gonna create the column name. So column name, this is gonna be the key for our dictionary. And here we're gonna simply say tree underscore placeholder. And then we say dot format i, so that we know what or which tree that is. Then we're gonna create our predictions for that tree. And here we use, again, uh, the decision tree predictions function. So a helper function that we have imported here at the beginning. And here we put in well, the test data frame and the tree. This is gonna be forest brackets i. So those are then the predictions, and now we're gonna put them into the dictionary. So we're gonna say df underscore predictions uh, brackets column name, column name uh, equals our predictions. And then at the end of this for loop, we simply transform this dictionary into a data frame. So we can say, pd dot data frame of our df predictions. So let's run this and now let's have a look at this data frame. And this is what it looks like. So we have the different examples here and here tree zero, one, two, three. And let's just print out the first eight rows. And now the way that we're gonna determine the prediction for the random forest is that we simply determine the mode uh, for each row, so which value appears most often. And that we can get by saying df underscore predictions dot mode. And here we want to mode uh, to have the mode long axis one. So if I run this now, we get uh, two columns. And that's because in some cases, for example here with this example, we have uh, the prediction bad two times and the prediction good two times. So the mode is actually bad and good. So for those cases then, in general, we're simply gonna use this first column here as our prediction. So we're gonna say brackets zero and let's also just print out the first five rows. And now, if you look at those rows, here we have three times bad and one good. So our prediction is gonna be bad. Here we have as we've seen, bad and good. So we simply pick one of those. And here we have four times good. 
So that's why it's good. And here we have free goods, so it's also good here. So that's how our random forest predictions are going to work. So let's copy this here. And then we're going to say random forest predictions equals the mode across the data frame predictions. So that's how this function works. So let's copy this, paste it into here. Let's run it and get rid of these cells here. And then we're going to say predictions. So let's see if that function works. So we're going to say predictions, random forest predictions of our test data frame and we pass in the forest. So let's run this. So let's have a look at that. So those are the predictions. And now let's calculate the accuracy of those predictions. So we're going to say accuracy equals calculate accuracy, which is again a helper function that we've imported here. And here we simply pass in the predictions and the labels of our test data frame. Then let's also uh, print this accuracy. And let's see what the accuracy of our random forest algorithm is. So here we get an accuracy of 72.5%. So it's definitely better than our base case of 53%, where we would just uh, predict that each wine is good. So the algorithm seems to have detected some patterns in the data and our code seems to be working. So now uh, let's put all those cells into just one. And now let's see how uh, the accuracy of our random forest algorithm compares to the accuracy of just having one decision tree. So let's copy this and paste that. And here we're going to say n trees is just one. And because of that, then we're going to use uh, all of our training data. And here in features, we're going to set to an arbitrarily high value. And that's because then in the get potential spits function, this random subspace uh, parameter is going to be higher than the length of our columns. So that, that way we don't do this uh, random uh, subspace method. So and then let's, let's leave the max def at four. So let's run this. And here we have actually gotten a higher accuracy. So let's run it again here. So it's similar. So let's run it again. In this case, it's a little bit lower. So now to get a better overview of which of those algorithm, uh, algorithms is actually better, let's just run this code here a couple of times. So we're going to put it into a for loop. So we're going to say for i in range 10. So let's just run it 10 times. And then let's also calculate the average accuracy for all those uh, iterations. So here we're going to simply create an empty list. And to that empty list, then we append our accuracy. And then at the end of the for loop, let's print the average accuracy, then placeholder, and you're going to say dot format. And we're going to transform this uh, list here into a numpy array accuracies. And then we can simply calculate the mean of that numpy array. So that should now be working. So let's run this. And then we're going to do the same for uh, our decision tree here. So here we have an accuracy of 75, 73, 74, 76. 
So let's now uh, copy this code, paste it, and then we're going to set number of trees to one. Uh, and bootstrap to uh, train the F here again 999 and this stays the same so let's run this also and here we have gotten an average accuracy of 74 percent so let's see what happens here 73 70 69 so that's the first value in the 60s 72 average accuracy is 72 so our random forest algorithm uh, seems to be slightly better for this data set and with that now we can end uh, end this series and that's how you can code a random forest from scratch so thanks for watching and hopefully i will see you on one of my next series